Here we are, and it is time to check on movies, and I'm very happy to uh, bring on the esteemed Marina Times columnist. He comes and goes on a rainbow. It is Michael Snyder, everybody. Thank you. Hey, hey, happy Friday, Kim. Hi. Uh, I'm glad to be here. Hope everybody's looking forward to the weekend. I know that... uh, uh, sports fans in the Bay Area and, you know, all points south, east, west, yeah. and north are excited about the Boston Red Sox coming to Oracle Park and facing off against the Giants. First time in a number of years, and I am thrilled at and, and filled with anticipation, you know. Okay, that's good. Are you going to the game? Uh, I am not, um, yeah. but I will be watching diligently on my laptop. Okay. Uh, and. Right. Uh, Rooting on the team. You know, um, speaking of laptops and and the Internet, uh, uh, I was uh, so shocked to see that the muskrat has begun rebranding Twitter as X and heedless, heedless of the letters association with porn or follow me here, maybe because of its association with porn. I don't know. You think Twitter becomes a, a, a porn warehouse? I have no idea, but I don't either. you know, uh, it could be a pirate thing. X marks the spot. Maybe he yeah. was reading Treasure Island. I, I have no idea what possessed the guy to do this. Uh, a brand so that's so solid, you know. I mean, yeah, uh, the Twitter, and, uh, Twitter, and tweet are in the uh, lexicon. They're like verbs, right? I mean, right. And it takes a lot. I mean, talk about marketing. It takes a lot to get something to, you know, be part of our culture and just be so ingrained. And now to change it like that? Yeah, I don't understand either. I don't either. Uh, You want to talk movies? Let's talk movies because, you know, everyone's talking Barbie and Oppenheimer still. That still seems to be the focus, but there's more to see. Right. Um, you know, I have actually been treated for um, a serious case of Barbenheimer. Uh, it's... Um, <laughs> there's a prescription and it's to go to another movie. Uh, And uh, let's kick off with Haunted Mansion. Um, The movie is called Haunted Mansion, but it's not particularly scary. Then again, it features performances by really accomplished comedic actors, Owen Wilson, Tiffany Haddish, and Danny DeVito, but it's not particularly funny. Um, uh, After the unexpected success and franchising of Pirates of the Caribbean, Haunted Mansion is another movie based on a Disneyland ride, and this is the second attempt to bring a story built around elements of the Haunted Mansion theme park to the big screen. Uh, That said, it is much better than the pretty awful 2003 Eddie Murphy vehicle, The Haunted Mansion, uh, which isn't saying much. And in fact, I'd put it on, on a par with the rather meh 2021 Halloween special, Muppet Haunted Mansion, which was made for streaming on Disney Plus, uh, and I assume is still there if you want to watch it. So in the case of the 2023 Haunted Mansion, the filmmakers, uh, director Justin Simeon and screenwriter uh, Katie DePold, did try to give this, uh, let's call it a cinematization. I don't know what to call it. Anyway, uh, they, they tried to give it some emotional heft. Uh, with three of the principal characters mourning lost loved ones, which makes their attempts to interact with the spirit world a little more poignant and sensible to the context of the movie. Um, Lakeith uh, Stanfield uh, is New Orleans resident Ben. He's an ex-scientist type whose misery has gotten the best of him, so he has forsaken his career and is now barely making a living by leading ghost tours of the French Quarter, where he debunks the supernatural uh, to his disgruntled customers. I mean, they go on ghost tours hoping to actually get some like, ooh, ghosts are real. <laughs> He's not buying any of that. So Rosario Dawson is Gabby, a widowed single mother with a precocious son named Travis, who desperately misses his father. And they're moved to a Fixer Upper in New, uh, New Orleans isn't going too well due to the presence of many angry specters roaming the dilapidated halls of the mm. house. So a promise of quick cash from a shady minister played by Owen Wilson brings Ben and the man of the cloth to the mansion where Ben, uh, you know, finds out that maybe there's something going on. Uh, and he and eventually a medium 
and a professor of the paranormal played respectively by Haddish and DeVito are brought into the mix <clears throat> with predictably wacky results. Uh, yes, there is a degree of emotion courtesy of Stanfield, Dawson, and Chase W. Dillon, the kid actor who plays Travis. Oh, yeah. Jamie Lee Curtis and Jared Leto were roped into uh, roles gleaned from the Disneyland attraction. And the New Orleans setting is funky uh, and known to get appropriately ooky spooky. Still, right. the scares and the laughs are no great shakes. The film even mm -hmm. goes so far as to have a sequence where certain unfortunates trapped in the titular mansion are thrown into chairs and scooted around through doors and out of the mansion just like people on a certain ride at Disneyland. So it's like a two hour exercise in product placement, which seems to be the wave <laughs> of the present. So let's see, in the past year, we've seen Tetris, Blackberry, Super Mario Brothers, Dungeons and Dragons, Barbie, of course. And next week we're gonna get Gran Turismo, a movie that features the video game racing simulator uh, of the same name as a major element of it's based on a true story plot. And now we have Haunted Mansion. Kim, as soon as the strike is over, I'm getting on board the product IP train and pitching Almond Joy the movie, the inspiring tale of a confection that risks censure by daring to put nuts on top of a coconut and chocolate mounds bar. That's well, going to be my, that's my big we, pitch. Didn't we have a, a movie about, was it Doritos or, or chips? Oh, yeah. Flaming Hot. About Flaming, Flaming Hot, hot Cheetos. Cheetos, yeah. that's right. So if we had a Cheeto movie, we could have a, an Almond Joy movie. Right, I'm, I'm telling you, this thing is money in the bank. Anyway, Ooh, as for Haunted Mansion 2023... Just like work. As for <laughs> Haunted Mansion 2023, it doesn't earn a, you know, a boo from me, mostly <laughs> due to the uh, goodwill generated by its skilled cast. You know, Stanfield, Dawson, Wilson, Haddish, and DeVito, but it is no e-ticket ride if you get my drift i have a anyway. question about it though would you say it's for kids this is a good kid movie or is it too spooky for kids it, it is it's a family movie but i really tend to think you know 10 12 and up it, there are some funny moments but it does okay. deal with death so <laughs> okay <laughs> you, you all right um, what's your next one what do you want to talk about okay uh let's talk about Talk to me. You know okay. those movies where a bunch of snarky teens get together and play chicken with a supernatural object like a Ouija board or a book of magic spells or, you know, a oh. cursed brooch. You know, the right. cursed brooches are always laying around the house. The next <laughs> thing you know, everybody's gathered around it and trying to have a seance. Now, imagine that all of those kids spoke with an Australian accent. Well, that's Talk to Me, which is a pretty decent and definitely creepy new horror movie from Down Under. So it may lean on some familiar tropes, but it's well made, well acted by its young cast, most of whom, if not all of them, unknown here in the States. And there are some grown ups too, including a familiar face in Miranda Otto uh, of Lord of the Rings and other big movies, who plays the mother of a brother and sister who become enmeshed in a game of spirit conjuring that uses what may or may not be an embalmed hand to contact the dead. Ooh. So Talk To Me gets a little grisly, benefiting from committed performances from the youngins and some very good practical effects and skin crawlingly frightening makeup rather than the sort of computer generated monsters or floating ectoplasm that seems to be in every other frame of Haunted Mansion. And more importantly, Talk To Me uh, delves into the emotional and psychological impact of a genuine tragedy a death that occurs before the events of the movie and informs the actions of Mia, the teenage girl whose pain fuels the movie's descent from party time uh, into bloody terror. Sophie Wilde, who plays Mia, shows depth and range. Uh, she's a performer to watch. And kudos to co-directors Danny and Michael Filippo and to Danny and Bill Hinsman, uh, who co-wrote the screenplay. Talk to me maybe a little flimsy in its setup, and again, the accents might be a stumbling block for some people. It's funny, Miranda Otto speaks so clearly and distinctly. Uh, you know, she's classically trained, I'm sure. And, and the kids are just mumbling and using jargon and whatever. Nonetheless, once you accept the nuts and bolts of it, it does deliver genuine scares, unlike a certain other movie I just spoke about. Mm -hmm. Anyway, 
Talk to Me is in theaters, just like that other movie. Um, um, let's, let's, shall we move on? We should, but before we do, can I show a picture of you as a Barbie? Oh, sure, if you need to. I do. This is Snyder in a box. Snyder Barbie. Everybody it's, needs one. I just want to show that. It's boho Barbie. Uh, you know, collect you them are, all. That is the cutest little photo op thing, and you look adorable in your Barbie box. Oh, thank you. You know, I just wanted to uh, show my support for this uh, worldwide craze, even though I thought the movie was, yeah, you know, it, it, I enjoyed yeah. watching it. Again, let me say, Oppenheimer, by all metrics, a better film, but <laughs> Barbie had its pleasures, okay? It did. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to show the uh, the Barbie, in a, the Snyder in a box. I really appreciate it. That, by the All way, right. that's only for people who are um, watching the video feed, not the uh, the audio feed. But that's trust true. me that's when true. I tell you, I'm I'm cute as the Dickens. <laughs> I really am. <laughs> All right, let's move on with your movies now. Okay. Uh, All right. Oh, Nicholas Cage. Uh, you know, Cage may be capable of subtle and award worthy work on screen, as in Pig, Leaving Las Vegas, and City of Angels. But he is also revered when he's in his over-the-top glory, as in the recent horror comedy Renfield, with Sympathy for the Devil, a, a lean and mean neo-film noir uh, that also features the versatile Joel Kinnaman as a straight man. You get Cage Uncaged. Um, he's a Boston-accented bastard who sneaks into the backseat of the Kinnaman character's car in a Las Vegas hospital parking garage where the latter has shown up because his wife is on the maternity ward and about to have a baby. So the unwanted passenger played by Cage pulls a gun on the driver and simply tells him to motor out of the garage and into the desert and thus begins a cat and mouse game that has more than its share of surprises. This is not a big budget movie. It's certainly not an elegant piece of tongue in cheek mythologizing like the recent uh, uh, Cage centric comedy, The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. It is a seriously nutty joy to be on this journey into tension uh, that takes some very unexpected turns. And Cage and Kinnaman play off one another so well. Uh, while it's not among either actor's best, Sympathy for the Devil, which was tightly directed by Yuval Adler, is, uh, let's say, devilishly entertaining, especially for Cage fans. It's in theaters, and this is one of those movies that's going to play well at home um, as well. Sympathy for the Devil. I, I enjoyed it. I, you know, it, I like Cage. I like watching him chew yeah. the scenery. He was gobbling up miles and miles of desert in this one. I don't know how he manages to do that, but he did. Would you call it an action thriller or not yeah. horror? It, no, it's okay. it's film it's film noir ish tension kind of crime drama vibe, you know, speaking okay. of which, oh, speaking of which, um, as unlikely as it may seem, uh, the unexpected hybrid of science fiction, gangster crime drama and comedy entitled They Cloned Tyrone is one of the better movies I've seen this year. And it's available now on Netflix. So woohoo. Um, uh, Fontaine, played by John Boyega of Attack the Block and recent Star Wars movies, is a low level drug dealer in his rundown inner city neighborhood. Yo Yo, played by Tiona Paris, who is Monica Rambeau, uh, AKA Photon, in the Marvel movies. Uh, and uh, TV shows. She's a streetwalker who wants out of the life and into higher education, or so she says. Right. Slick Charles, uh, played by Oscar winner Jamie Foxx, is a uh, feckless pimp who's trying to get by with the least amount of effort. But their uh, ramshackle corner of the world is not what it seems, which they each begin to realize when Fontaine is gunned down by a rival drug dealer and left for dead only to wake up in his bed the next morning, none the worse for bullets. So is Fontaine dreaming or hallucinating? And if so, uh, why did Yo-Yo and Charles see him get shot? So mysteries unravel over the course of an extremely amusing and fun-filled movie that also features David Allen Greer in a brief but hilarious turn as a preacher and Kiefer Sutherland as a man with the answers that Fontaine, Yo-Yo, and Charles seek but may not like. Anyway, They Clone Tyrone was directed in very lively and knowing fashion by Jewel uh, Taylor. 
who co-wrote the razor sharp script with tony rettenmeyer uh it's strong on social satire and 70s black exploitation movie energy even though it's apparently set in the modern day and it somehow manages to be mordantly funny even as it depicts some ugly truths about the racial divide that still exists in america after centuries uh, some have likened it to get out in its subtext and i see echoes of westworld it does have science fictional elements as one might perceive from the title i'm just glad that they didn't call it clones in the hood because that would have <laughs> been a, that would have been a joke too far it's in theaters uh, but more importantly like i said it's on netflix i really got a kick out of it so do you want to talk about one more or a tv show because i think we can squeeze in one thing one other thing Let's talk about uh, television for a moment, because as you know, um, I like genre stuff. I like science fiction. I like superheroes. And I want to say a few words in praise of those old scientists, which is a crossover episode oh. of Star Trek Strange New Worlds that deftly incorporates characters from the animated series Star Trek Lower Decks with Jack Quaid. Yeah. That Quaid name means what it think what you think of it. Grown up Nepo baby, uh, and Tony <laughs> Newsom, actress and musician, uh, as live action versions of the ensign characters that they voice on Lower Decks: Bradward Boimler and Beckett Mariner. And regardless of Quaid's lineage, mom and dad are uh, Meg Ryan and Dennis Quaid. He is fantastic as the live action Boimler. And the main cast of uh, Strange New Worlds is up for the comedy that results from this uh, the, the situation where the wayward ensigns portal from their 2D world 100 years in the future back to the 3D world of pre Star Trek. Uh, uh, pre-Kirk Star Trek, you know, before Kirk takes the helm. Uh, so you've got Anson Mount as Christopher Pike, and you got Rebecca Romaine as uh, number one, and Ethan Peck as the young Spock. It was yeah. so entertaining. I have never seen in my life I, uh, uh, an element of Star Trek or Star Wars or something from Marvel that didn't have a lot of complaints in social media for one reason or another. I saw nothing but 100% praise for this thing wow. uh, from all corners, and I was uh, shocked. And speaking of the Quades, Full Circle on Max is a Steven Soderbergh-helmed six-episode miniseries inspired by Akira Kurosawa's classic uh, crime drama, High and Low. Yeah, he did more than samurai epics. Full Circle is a multi-character ensemble piece set in New York City uh, that spins out of a kidnapping that goes wrong. I was totally engrossed in it. The cast is headed up by Zazie Beetz, Claire Danes, Timothy Oliphant, and Jack Quaid's wow. dad, Dennis Quaid. <laughs> uh, I really enjoyed Full Circle on Max, which used to be known as HBO Max. And I guess that wraps things up for today's uh, little culture blast. It does. So let's wrap it up. Haunted Mansion. You said, meh, mm. uh, talk to me, you enjoyed. You said it's uh, there's some problems with it, but overall, talk to me, you said was pretty good. And some of the up and coming actors, you said we should watch at, watch for. Sympathy for the Devil, I don't think you liked that one very much. No, uh, no, you, I yeah. did like it. Yeah, you're, oh, you uh, did think, like Sympathy for the Devil. Okay. Right. I did. I thought it was fun. It was like a two-hander with Joel Kinnaman and Nick Cage in his glory. I, You know, okay. I enjoyed it. Again, made on a shoestring, but, you know, kick butt. It, you know, it's not going to change the world, but I enjoyed it. And they cloned Tyrone. You found that funny, and you thought that was a good one. Yeah, it's the, my favorite of the four films, actually, and it's, yeah. uh, again, available on Netflix. How's that? And then, and I think you said it's called Those Old Scientists. Is that what that is? That's the, the episode, of, it's the episode yeah. of Star Trek uh, Strange New Worlds. If you're watching the show, uh, you already know. Uh, that's, yeah. uh, you know, it, it, it was so much fun. And full circle for TV. And I love that you always talk about TV because I think that's where most of us are watching. So that's good. Thank you for including that. Hey, my pleasure. And uh, yeah. thanks for having me on. Thank you. You can find Michael Snyder at the Marina Times and, of course, here on the Mark Thompson Show every Friday. Michael Snyder, thank you. You're very welcome, Kim. We'll check you out and Mr. Mark Thompson next week uh, at a new That's time. It. I guess we'll be coming on at about 11, uh, excuse me, 1240 p.m. That, that Does that sound right? Uh, so the show will be from 11 to 1. 
And um, on Friday, next Friday, you'll be at about, I would say, 1235, 1240. So that sounds about right. Well, but, you know, it's just like daylight savings time. Uh, push right. your clocks ahead, everybody. <laughs> Michael Snyder, he comes and goes on a rainbow. Farewell and go Giants. Bye, Michael Snyder. <laughs>